instructional video is intended to be a supplement to the instructions included with your Reliance Controls transfer switch. Please be sure to read the enclosed instructions in their entirety. Installation of a Reliance Controls transfer switch is very easy and in most cases will take less than one hour. However, you must be somewhat familiar with household wiring and comfortable with removing the cover of an existing electrical panel and working inside of it. If you are at all unsure about doing this installation yourself, it is best to hire a professional electrician. In all cases, we recommend having your work double checked by an experienced individual. The Reliance ProTran is the transfer switch most commonly installed by professional electricians, but you can do it yourself and I'm going to walk you through a typical installation. Let's begin by looking at some of the tools you'll need for installation. A drill, screwdrivers, wire cutter and stripper, and a hammer. You will either need screws if you are mounting the transfer switch to a wood surface, or anchors if you are mounting to brick or concrete. There are several different types of anchors available. Any of them will work. Before we can begin the Reliance ProTran installation, we'll need to decide what circuits we want to operate during a power outage. But first, let's look at the transfer switch itself. These are the switches that transfer power from the utility to the generator, and these are the circuit breakers that correspond to each switch. The switches that have 15 amp circuit breakers can be installed on any 15 or 20 amp household circuit. The switches that have 20 amp breakers must be installed on a 20 amp household circuit. If you have a double pole or 240 volt circuit that you would like to operate, like a well pump, it must be on the double pole circuit breaker. If you don't need to power a 240 volt circuit, this handle tie can be removed by loosening the two screws and the A and B switches become two separate 120 volt circuits. When the generator is in use, these meters will show how much power is being used on each side of the transfer switch. Your generator will operate most efficiently if you can divide the power used evenly between the two sides of the transfer switch. Think of your generator as having two outputs, one that powers the A, C, and E circuits, and one that powers the B, D, and F circuits. There's a chart in your installation manual that shows the wattage requirements for many typical household devices. When choosing which circuits to operate, try to divide the total wattage evenly between the two sides of the transfer switch. You can also use a simple plug-in watt meter, like the Reliance Control ZAM Watt, to help you to determine how much power an appliance, such as a refrigerator or sump pump, requires. Be sure to refer to your installation manual for more information on load balancing. After choosing the circuits we want to power during an outage, we'll need to locate the corresponding circuit breakers and mark them in the main panel. We'll do this before we take the cover off the main panel because it will be much more difficult to identify them after the cover is off. I'm going to attach the furnace fan to circuit C, so I'm first going to locate the furnace breaker and mark it with tape. The next appliance I'd like to power is the refrigerator. In this panel, it's on one of the kitchen circuits. I've now finished labeling the circuit breakers. I've chosen also to power the sump pump, living room lights, and well pump. Note that the well pump is on a double pole circuit breaker and will be powered by transfer switch circuits A and B. 